Let's create an engine head for our engine block in Onshape. Here I am in the part studio for the engine block. I could create it in here, but that's really good if you want to design with interdependencies or in a top-down fashion. It just might clutter up my screen. So for that reason, I am going to create a brand new part studio. Let's use the plus sign to create the part studio. And I've got my planes visible. Let's start by selecting the plane called top, and then I can hold down the right mouse button to create a new sketch. And I will also use the right mouse button to view normal to the sketch. I'm going to throw in a couple of construction lines because I know that I want to get symmetry later on. So let me start it about over here and make it about to here. And then I'm going to escape and then get back in so that I can do another one from here to here. Let's hit the escape key. Now I will create some regular lines. Let's create a line from here to here that is horizontal, then one that's at an angle, and another horizontal line. Then we can close it off. I will hit the escape key to finish creating lines. Let's throw in our symmetry constraint. So I will pick the construction line and a couple of the vertices here and the same thing down at the bottom construction line and the two bottom vertices. Now let's throw in our dimensions. I'm going to dimension the width of the top line and this is going to be a value of 140. And let's change the width of the bottom line. This is going to be 160 and the distance from the middle plane to this is going to be a value of 90 and it's going to be slightly smaller in the other direction it's going to be a value of let me left click to place the dimension 85 so that's good and i'm also going to put in some fillets in here for the different corners so let's go to the sketch fillet command. Now left click and then left click and then left click to place the dimension. And this one is going to be a value of 60. And then repeat that over on the opposite side. And value of 60 as well. Let's escape out of there. And I'm escaping out of there just because I want to move the dimension as well as use a different value down at the bottom. So let's sketch fill it, left, left, and left click. This one's going to be 50. And repeat over here, here, left click, 50 for the value. And let's escape to get out of the fillet mode. And I just want to drag the dimension out. So this sketch looks great. Let's hit the check mark and just keep track of things. Let's rename this and I'm going to call this my base sketch. And then let's use the extrude command. And I had the sketch selected so it automatically used the faces of the sketch. And this one is going to have a depth of 50. And from here, I can edit the name of the feature. Let's call this the base extrude. I always like renaming my features just to keep track of everything. That's good for our first feature. Then on the bottom, we are going to have a cut where this is going to fit into another model. Let me rotate over so that we're looking at the bottom surface. Let's create a sketch on this surface and let's right mouse click and view normal to the plane. I will go to our command for offset and I'm going to offset the entities on this surface and I can flip the direction and let's change the dimension to a value of 10. Now we can hit the check mark. Let me turn off the display. 
of my plane to use my keyboard shortcut P for a second. Now I will do an extrude. I'm going to select the outer sketch region. Right now it wants to add material. Let's choose that we want to remove material. And the depth of this one is going to be a value of 2.5. Just a little way to have it fit into the engine block. And let's hit the check mark for that one. For the next feature, we're going to apply taper or draft to the sides of the model. So let's go to the draft. Oops, that's a chamfer command. Let's go to the draft command. I saw the angled surface and I thought, oh, there's the draft command. All right, so this is going to be neutral plane draft. So my neutral plane is going to be that cut surface. Then for the entity's draft, I will just pick this surface. We've got tangent propagation turned on. And the angle is going the wrong direction. We can flip it the other direction. And let's change the value to 5 degrees. And everything looks good. Let's hit the check mark for that draft. And now we're going to put some big rounds on the top edges. Let's click on the fillet command. And oops, selected a face. I was trying to pick just the edge. And circular tangent propagation, that's good. It's going to have a huge value of 35 for the radius. Now I can hit the check mark for that. And we're going to put in our hole in the middle of the part where the spark plug would go. So let's choose the hole tool. And for this one right now, it's set for a counterbore, which is actually the kind that I want to do. And I don't have a sketch point to locate it. No problem. We can use the mate connector. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of P to turn on my planes real quick, just to show you that it automatically will grab the intersection of those two planes. Now let's configure the size of the hole. So we've got a counterbore depth of 35. That's good. But this diameter for the counterbore diameter needs to be a lot bigger. Let's change that to a value of 30. And then the through hole is going to have a value of 30. So I like the way that that looks. Let's hit the, ah, let's change the name while we're here. Let's call this the spark plug hole. and hit the check mark. Let me use the keyboard shortcut P again to unclutter my computer screen. And at the bottom, we're going to have a shape for a combustion chamber uh, with a hemispherical shape. Go with a hemi. Let's use the datum plane called right to create a new sketch. And I'm going to view normal to the sketch and for this one, it would be helpful if I change the way that I'm looking at my model. Let's see, how about translucent? Yep, I like the way that that will work. And so the shape that I am going to use, let me change back to my right view. Let me throw in a construction line. Not sure if I'm going to need it, but hey, can't hurt. And so let's get this vertical construction line. I probably will need it for dimensions that I want to create. Let's hit the escape key. Okay, here I have the vertical center line. And just to let you know, I was sketching and I screwed up what I was sketching. So I am just going to start over. Let's start off with our arc. And I'm going to use the center and ends arc. And let's go from here down to about there. And let me throw in some constraints. Let's see, I want to make sure that these two points are vertical with one another. And let's go to horizontal and make these horizontal. Just a way of making sure that I'm getting a 90 degree arc. Let's throw in some lines. So I'm going to sketch a line from here, horizontal, and then snap into here. And then close off the sketch. Let's throw in some dimensions. So I'll click on the dimension tool 
and we're going to have this be a value of 18 and the dimension from this line to here this is going to be a value of 105 and let's see I also want a dimension from here to here and we'll make this a value let's see has a value of 16 look there we go that looks good now let's hit the check mark now ah, let's rename while we're here let's call this the hemi sketch let's put it in space but that's okay let's hit the check mark and now i am going to create a revolve let's select that face to revolve and then for the axis of revolution i'm going to pick the cylindrical surface and let's just hit the check mark to complete that feature let's turn off the display of our planes let's go back to our shaded display and there we have the hemi feature created in the model all right let's see next features to create we are going to have our fin cuts in the top so let's create a sketch i'll sketch on this surface and let's view normal to the sketch plane and i'm going to throw in symmetry later on for a rectangle so let's put in our center line and let it infer right through to the origin let me hit the escape key and then let's sketch in our corner rectangle from i'm going to exaggerate a little bit i don't really want it this big and i want it to snap into geometry but sometimes i find it just easier if i sketch big let's put in a symmetric constraint between the construction line and the two other lines then we can put in a coincident constraint and have this snap right into our part geometry and do the same thing down at the bottom and we still have some blue lines because we need a width dimension let's put in a dimension for the width of this line and our width is going to be a value of five that's good let's hit the check mark now that we have our sketch i'm going to select the sketch first and then hit on the extrude command and right now it's adding material this is going to be cut so let's remove material and it's using a blind depth instead i'm going to choose up to face and pick this face here and that way we get our nice cut in the model and just want to check to make sure that the merge scope is part one what else would it merge with and now that we have our extrude which let's rename this this is going to be my fin cut extrude and this is oh, let me deselect this is going to be my fin cut sketch hit the enter key and now i need to pattern those fins so or the cut that will form the fin so let's select it actually let's just go to the linear pattern command and right now it's set to a part pattern let's change this to a feature pattern now i will choose my fin cut as the entity that should be patterned let me use p to turn on my planes real quick in order to select a direction let me hit p to turn off their display and the spacing right now is a value of 25 let's use a value of 10 so that they are closer to one another and i'm going to use the centered option so that way i can have them created in both sides and let's try let's see how the value of six look now it looks like we can get another let's do seven there we go that goes far enough out to the end of the part and you'll notice that the linear pattern one is right now in red and it's having some trouble constructing the geometry so i will check the option to apply per instance and now we can see the preview and it's no longer in red let's hit the check mark and 
I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this the fin cut pattern. And the next feature that will go in here will be holes for the mounting bolts. And I want to create a sketch for the hole, but I don't want to sketch on one of these like, you know, thin little surfaces in here. So I'm going to use the roll back bar to roll back to before those cuts appear in the model. Just make it a little easier for me to create my sketch for the mounting hole. Let's sketch on this surface. Let's view normal to the sketch plane. And I'm going to create a construction line at a 45 degree angle. And so let's create it out here. Hit the escape key. Hit the letter P to turn off the plane, to turn the planes on so I can create my dimension from here to here. And that's going to be a value of 45 degrees. Let's now locate our point. And so let's put a point. I'll be about over there. Now we can dimension the point from here to here. And in the original part, we are creating the holes at a distance of 67.5 from the center location. So there we have it. Let's rename this and let's call it our mounting hole sketch. And hit the check mark. So again, the sketch just contains that one point. Once again, I use the keyboard shortcut of P in order to turn off the display of the planes. Then I use the rollback bar to bring back the other features. Now we can create our hole. And I'll locate it on this point. And right now, the counterbore is way too big. So once again, we're going to use a depth of 35 for the counterbore. But this diameter should be a value of 15. And the counterbore diameter should be 25. So there we go. That looks a lot better for the mounting hole. Then let's hit the check mark to complete this. And I'm going to rename this to be called my mounting hole. And let's use the top view. And now I can create a pattern of these using the circular pattern command. So let's go to circular pattern and change from a part pattern to a feature pattern. For the features that we want to pattern, I'll just select the mounting hole. For the axis of the pattern, well, let me rotate the model slightly and grab this cylindrical surface. It's automatically creating for them located over 360 degrees, which is what I want. Once again, the pattern is in red. Let's change to apply per instance. Everything looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And if I go to my top view, yes, that is exactly what I wanted. Let me rotate the model. So in that way, we now have our engine head completed. And now we can create an assembly in the next video and put these together along with some hardware. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.